Welcome to CoreLogic's first housing market update for 2019. It looks like the new year has kicked off in a similar way the last year ended, with housing values broadly falling across most regions of Australia. National dwelling values were down by 1% over the month, which was the 13th monthly fall over the past 15 months. CoreLogic's National Dwelling Value Index is now down by 6.1% since the market peaked back in October 2017. The weakest housing market conditions continue to be centred in Sydney and Melbourne, where values have fallen by at least 1% on a monthly basis since November last year. Both markets have seen an acceleration in the rate of decline over the past three months, with the rolling quarterly falls tracking at the fastest pace since the downturn commenced. Sydney dwelling values were down by 4.5% over the three months ending January 2019, and Melbourne values were 4% lower. The latest results take Sydney dwelling values back to levels last seen roughly two and a half years ago, while in Melbourne, where the market peaked four months later than Sydney, dwelling values are back to where they were in January 2017. While most of the attention is on Australia's two largest cities, weaker housing market conditions are evident across most of the capital cities. Every capital, apart from Canberra, recorded a month-on-month -month fall in dwelling values in January, and only two capital cities, that's Hobart and Canberra, recorded a rise in values over the past three months. While values aren't falling across every broad region of the country, it's clear that even within the areas where values are rising, the market has lost some steam. The only regions where the annual change in dwelling values has improved relative to a year ago are Darwin, where the annual rate of decline has eased from 9.7% a year ago to 3.5%, regional Tasmania, where the annual rate of growth has risen from 4.9% to 9.2%, and regional Northern Territory, where the annual decline of 1% has improved to an increase of 1.1%. The regional markets are generally showing healthier conditions relative to the capitals. The combined regional index was down by 0.6% over the three months ending January, while the combined capitals index was down by 3.3% over the same period. Three of the seven broad rest of state regions recorded a decline in values over the past three months. Regional New South Wales values were down by 1.3%, while regional Queensland values were 0.3% lower and regional WA values were down by 0.8%. Dwelling values have been falling across Melbourne since November 2017, with the market down 8.7% since peaking. The past three months has seen the rate of decline accelerate. In fact, with Melbourne values down by 4% over the past three months, this is the largest decline over any three-month period since our index commenced back in 1980. Weakness in the market is most concentrated across the most expensive end of the market. The most expensive quarter of Melbourne properties has recorded a 12.4% fall over the past 12 months, while the least expensive quarter of the market is down by less than 1% over the past year. The surge in first home buyers since stamp duty concessions became available is likely a key factor in stronger housing market conditions across the more affordable end of the market. January can be a hard month to read the housing market due to low levels of activity. However, the recent trend in housing market data has generally weakened over the past three months, with the pace of decline accelerating across markets already in the down phase and growth generally moderating in other areas. Tight credit conditions, weakening consumer sentiment, less domestic and foreign investment, and higher levels of housing supply are the primary drivers of the worsening conditions. Advertised stock levels have started the year on a weak footing, with fewer fresh listings being added to the market, while relisted properties continue to mount up due to the slower rate of absorption. CoreLogic listings counts for January show that listing numbers are tracking 13% lower than last year for new listings across the capital cities, while total advertised stock levels are almost 16% higher. The rise in advertised stock is most pronounced in Melbourne, where total listing numbers are 34% higher than the same time last year, and in Sydney, where there's 24% more stock than a year ago. Heightened levels of available homes to purchase inevitably pushes more power back to the buyer. Buyers can negotiate harder. They can take their time in making a purchase decision, and they can be selective in finding a home that's right for their budget and for their lifestyle. Vendors are clearly facing more challenging selling conditions. Vendor discounting rates across the combined capitals have increased to a median level of 6.1% over the three months ending January, up from 4.7% at the same time last year, and the median selling time has risen to 44 days, up from 37 days a year ago. 
The slowdown in buyer activity is evident in the reduced number of settled sales. CoreLogic estimates there were 12.3% fewer sales over the 12 months ending January 2019 relative to the same period a year ago. And transactional activity is down 15.8% from the 2015 peak level of activity. Auction results will become available from the beginning of February, however we aren't expecting a turnaround in the weak auction results that were evident through late last year. The trend through December 2018 saw clearance rates across the combined capitals reaching a low of 40%. Overall, the January index results as well as peripheral housing data are foreshadowing a challenging year ahead for the housing market. There may be a further dent to confidence as we approach the federal election and housing finance conditions are likely to remain tight after the hand down of the Hain Royal Commission report which is due out in early February. With so much uncertainty in the housing market and the broader economy, it's all the more important to stay up to date with the latest facts and figures from CoreLogic. Stay up to date with our research and our commentary at www.corelogic.com.au.